Hello, and welcome to Superbot 2018, our second annual Superbot conference. My name is Jesse Hall. I am CTO of Superbot and one of the founders, and I will be your MC for the day. Um, I am incredibly excited to be here talking to you about how we can make amazing conversational interfaces. And this space is actually really quite personal for me. Um, I feel like I've been talking to computers for my whole life, as long as I can remember, 30 years. Um, in fact, my wife would probably say that uh, I'm better at talking to computers than people. Um, but, you know, I feel like talking to computers is really my superpower. And, um, and that superpower has enabled me to do amazing things. I've been able to raise my family in this wonderful city of San Francisco. I've been able to travel all over the world, and I've literally been able to touch the lives of millions of people. And what really excites me about conversational interfaces is that they offer the opportunity for millions of people to be able to talk to computers. All those servers at Google and Microsoft and Amazon that really only used to listen to geeks like me are now gonna start listening to the whole world. And to me, that is incredibly exciting. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce a man that I've known for 20 plus years. I've had the pleasure of working with, being great friends with, the CEO of Dashbot, Artie Merritt. Hey, yeah, that's awesome, dude. That was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for take the clicker. Hello, hello. Hey, uh, th thanks a lot, Jesse. I really appreciate that. And uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. We're really excited about uh, today, just as Jesse mentioned. You know, when we did this last year, some people thought we were crazy to have a conference in basically less than a year. We'd only been around for a little less than a year. And last year, we had about 250 people show up. And this year, we have uh, about 400. So we're really uh, thankful for all you guys coming here and supporting us. As many of you know, we are a conversational analytics platform. And when we refer to conversational interfaces, we really mean anything from te more text-based like Facebook and Slack, or voice like Google Home or Alexa. Uh, we support any interface. Uh, it could even be web-based, e uh, email, uh, WeChat, Line, whatever it is. You know, as Jesse was mentioning here, we're big believers in conversation. We really see this as the future. If you remember all those videos of two-year-olds swiping the iPhone and the iPad, the same thing's happening right now with devices like Alexa and Google Home. In fact, you know, Jesse was mentioning as two little kids, they run up and say, Alexa, play Star Wars. Alexa, play the happy dance. They already know how to interact with these devices. What got us really excited is the data is just so much more richer and more actionable than, say, web or mobile. It's all unstructured data. Users can say or send whatever they want, whether that's images and audio or video, uh, or more importantly, their own words, their own voice. And they're saying uh, what they want from the bot as well as what they think of the bot uh, afterwards. Sometimes it's not too pleasant, but it does lead to some pretty interesting actions you can take, um, like a live person takeover if someone's you know, having a hard time. We enable brands and developers to increase engagement, retention, and monetization. And we do that through actionable insights and tools to help you build better user experiences, uh, either in voice or in your chatbot environment. You know, we launched about two years ago. We processed over 29 billion messages. Uh, to give you an idea of the growth, it took 10 months to reach the first billion, six weeks the second, and now we do more than three billion a month. In fact, last year when we were up here, we had just crossed over the three billion mark. We're really excited about, by that. To put it in perspective, at, last year at F8, Facebook announced they were doing two billion messages a month. Uh, we saw 40% of that traffic last year. Uh, when we do three billion a month, we're seeing more data than most whole messaging platforms. So I thought we'd share some of the uh, data with you. I gave away what I was going to show you. Um, so if you didn't see that. Do you know what the most common message people say to Facebook bots? Hi. Yeah. So it's uh, hi, hello, the thumbs up. These are really popular. Um, there's other messages up there that are just as useful to, to look out for, things like stop and thanks. Uh, in fact, we noticed. Um, we publish this data all the time to show folks what the top messages are, how they change. And even though we publish this, uh, it's interesting to see that the amount of bots that still don't support the most common messages. Uh, hi, for instance, about 30% of the bots don't have any uh, appropriate response to hi. In fact, we had a meetup not too long ago where someone in the audience asked if we would give them feedback on the bot. And the very first thing I did is type in hi, and it said, I have no idea what you're asking. 
Uh, similarly, uh, you know, help is actually really important. Uh, only about 50% of the bots actually provide some sort of help back when someone asks for help. It's an early space. It's really useful to provide that, that help. Uh, things like stop, uh, uh, only about 40%, so more than 60% don't uh, uh, reply with anything appropriate there, whether it's asking the person uh, to change, if they want to change their settings, confirming they want to stop, or just outright stopping. We have another customer that they send a lot of sports scores out, and they found when um, their users uh, were fans of a team that was losing, they would get really upset and they would block the bot. And so this company was paying to acquire these users, and then they would get blocked, they'd have to pay to reacquire them later. So they saw this in the analytics, and they added a mute functionality, and that mute functionality was the difference of a retained user versus a lost user. Um, similarly with uh, thanks, uh, only about, you know, 60% or so bots reply with anything remotely close to appropriate response to thanks. And people do give positive feedback to their bots. But users aren't just saying hi and hello. They're, they're saying ciao and bonjour and, and uh, hola and all different languages. Uh, in fact, these are some of the top languages that we see through Facebook bots. Uh, beyond the Romance languages, you have uh, Russian and uh, Chinese and Arabic. And you see all those double byte characters come through in the data. We often talk about creating a personality for your bot or your skill, that this actually increases engagement. You know, more than 19% of Facebook bots get someone asking them uh, what their name is. Another 12% are asking, are you a human or not? And then 6% are a boy or a girl. But we found th those users or those customers that created some sort of personality, they saw their engagement go up. Now, users aren't just sending in messages via text. They're sending in images and audio. And these stickers aren't just images. They actually mean something. The thumbs up is one of the most common image or stickers people send. We had another customer. It's a really popular food uh, delivery or ordering uh, uh, service, fast food delivery. When we were looking, helping them look through their data, their behavior flows, we kept seeing one or two messages and stops. And we're like, how come there's all these stops? What's happening? And we went in and looked, and it was the thumbs up. So the thumbs up is always within the top three Facebook message. Um, and here, when someone, they go through, order their food, they get really excited, and they do the thumbs up, and then the bot just broke. So not only did they not get their food, um, but the bot stopped working uh, because they weren't handling support for something like the thumbs up. But users are sending these all around the world, and we get to see different ones. I actually pulled this in December. That's why you see like a Happy New Year in there. But it was interesting seeing all the dog uh, emoticons around the world. They back here, I think we're a little more into cats. <laughs> but users do send in images also. Uh, some of you guys might have heard me talk about this before. We, we ran a whole slew of images through uh, an image detection service. And do you know what the most common or popular image users send to Facebook bots is? Do you know what that is? It turns out it's a selfie. So they're sending this to chatbots, not to people. Like the person, uh, human, portrait, those all map to selfie. So we looked at the difference between men and women. And so men, you start to see in the cars and vehicles. Uh, women still skew pretty he heavy to selfies. But then one popped up that was kind of interesting, electronics. And you're like, why are women taking photos of electronics? Do you know what that is? It it's when you do the selfie in the mirror, uh, the mirror captures the phone. And it got tagged as an electron electronics. So the crazy thing is people do send non-safe for work images in. Uh, about 2% of the images are naked selfies. So it's you know, pretty rough. Um, while it's only a small percentage, when people do it, they do it a lot. So a normal image is only sent in one time. A naked selfie is sent in on average nearly five times. And in the two months we looked at this, one guy sent his naked selfie 266 times. So there's some hurdle you must get over where you think it's OK to do. You just keep doing it. <laughs> we, we also looked at the usage of men and women. So 60% of the users on Facebook bots happen to be men. But we see an increase uh, in women's usage. Last year when we looked at this, there's about 28% were women. Now it's 37%. The, the, and the amount of sessions are actually increasing too. So what does this all mean? Are people actually using bots? Like, what, what, uh, Do they like them? Mobile 30-day retention is about 36%. So we're seeing with chatbots and even voice skills, that it's not too far off of that. Um, you know, especially Facebook and, and Slack, they're, they're right there. And speaking of voice, um, you know, because we are big believers in voice, we did a survey of users, uh, owners of these uh, Google Homes and Alexas to see what they really think of the devices, how they're using them, and, and, and what they think. So the interesting stat here is, um, 
About 57% of the users or owners use their, their device multiple times a day. A another 17% use it at least once a day. So that's almost 74, 75% are using these at least once a day. We asked if they were behavior changing. And the takeaway here, there's only about 20% said that they weren't or they, weren't un or they were unsure. The other 80% saw them behavior changing in some way. I know personally at, at home we have a, a small two bedroom and we use one of the rooms as an office. And as soon as I got the Alexa and set it up in the kitchen, I no longer sit in that back room. I'm sitting in the kitchen next to the Alexa so I can ask it questions, I can listen to music. Uh, as soon as I set it up, within an hour, I bought one for my parents, bought them for my brother and sisters. Uh, uh, I ordered the lights. I have everything rigged up. I wanted to feed the cat. Um, so it's definitely behavior changing. And I never had Amazon Prime before until having this and then went out and did that too. So we asked folks, um, you know, what are some of the, the popular use cases? Like what? What are they using? And listening to music is one of the most popular music, weather, info. Um, the interesting thing, while games is only about 30% uh, of users use that, the people that do use it a lot, 56% uh, of the, those people using uh, it for games are playing multiple times a day. If we break it up by male versus female, there's some maybe stereotypes start to come out, like sports, about 46% of men use it to listen to sports uh, scores, whereas only uh, around 40% uh, or so of women are doing that, or 34%, sorry. Um, but we see uh, heavier usage uh, for women on music, weather, and info, like four or 5% more uh, usage on those uh, uh, use cases. Uh, discovery is still a challenge in this space. When we ask folks how many skills or voice apps they use, uh, the majority are only using a handful right now. Uh, one of the issues is just the naming itself. When we ask them what skills you use, there are folks that said, oh, is that what you call them? Um, it, you know, Google's changed the name a few times. Uh, Alexa's called them the skills and it's coming somewhat of the standard term. Um, in terms of discovery, most folks are finding them through social media, and that maps pretty much with what we hear from brands and developers. They often mention the way they're acquiring users is through social media, whether that's paid or organic. So we want to know what, what do people really think about these devices? How do they feel? And the interesting thing is, in terms of uh, the ability to understand and the device's responses, it was about 43 and 47% were very satisfied with these. If you even add any of the satisfied folks in, it's Roughly 80% um, are actually quite satisfied with their responses um, and their ability to understand, which, which is pretty impressive. I think the folks here in the space might sometimes get frustrated, but um, you know the average user is actually uh, fairly uh, pleased with these. In fact, um, we asked the folks uh, if they would rank the device on a scale one to five, what they think of it, uh, given it a star rating. Uh, and it comes out as a four and a half stars for whether they have an Alexa or a Google Home. And we asked them the likelihood that they would recommend these devices. It was similar, about four and a half out of five that they would recommend them. So what about the skills themselves? So in the case of Alexa, they have more than 31,000 skills in the store. Uh, more than 5,000 were added this year alone and 1,600 within the past month. So we took a look at the ratings uh, of these skills and you can see the, the skewed um, five star and one star. It turns out those are primarily from uh, skills that only got one review. In fact, 65% of the five star reviews only have one review, and 75% of the one star only have one review. In fact, only about 60% of the skills even have reviews. If we take the one review out, you start to see somewhat of a, a bell curve showing up in the middle. It turns out 95% of skills have less than nine reviews. So we filter those out and you see two, uh, sort of the distribution around two areas in the middle around the three, three, 3.2 stars and then getting towards the high end on the closer to the middle fours. So these are the most popular skills in terms of the number of skills out there. So games are the most popular in terms of how many skills there are. Only about 40% of those have ratings. That's what the bottom is there. If we actually look at the average rating, music ones are rated the highest at about 4.3 uh, stars. Games are around 3.6 on average. And then towards the bottom, food and drink is uh, roughly 3, and, and utilities are about 2.8 uh, star rating. So we're really excited about today. Uh, Dennis, our third co-founder, is actually going to come out later today to talk about some of the new announcements. But just to give you a, a sort of sneak peek here, um, we, we have a bunch of new metrics around 
uh, comparison metrics to see how you compare on retention. We have a new dashboard that bubbles up information very quickly to you to get to that, those key KPIs right off the bat. We added new features for voice. If anyone's doing anything with audio, whether it's having music or audio files uh, played in your uh, voice skill or a voice app, uh, we have ways to track that better. And what we're really excited about is this whole uh, user segmentation tool, you can segment your audience however you like to dive deeper into the analytics and um, reach out to those folks. So as I mentioned, really excited about Superbot today. Uh, we have a great group of speakers. So it's from some of the top brands out there, top platforms, startups, investors, um, uh, platforms, you name it. It's a, a great group of speakers. We couldn't have done this without the team, so yeah, you met Jesse. Dennis is going to come up here in a little bit. Justine actually put this whole thing on, wherever she, she is. Uh, Henry and Luke are here. Ryan James, Ryan Morrison, uh, Ido, uh, Regina, Lindsay. They're all part of our team, and we have a whole slew of volunteers out there. We couldn't have done this without them. Nor could we have done it without our investors. We have a great group of investors uh, led by FFBC, Bessemer, uh, BDMI, Samsung, Rembrandt, Scrum, RGA, Recruit. These are a great group of folks. They're really supportive of us. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have some really great sponsors for today. Uh, that's IBM, Slack, uh, Twilio, um, Samsung, and uh, Chatbot Magazine. There's two giveaways that are going on today. One is with the gin folks giving away the glasses. I think they're doing it at the coffee break. And then the dot bot folks from Amazon, it's a new registry. Uh, they're giving away some Echoes, and they actually have an event Thursday night that they'll, uh, uh, if anyone's in town Thursday, they're going to have that too. So without further ado, I guess we'll get on with the show.